Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Big Nights with Wonder Girls by Travel Wonder. My name is Cheryl, and here with me is Mabel. Hello, everybody. Gongsi Fa Tai. Happy New Year. Oh, yeah. Gongsi Fa Tai. Happy <laughs> New Year. <laughs> well, my, my time flies so fast, I almost forgotten that, that today is really, I think, the ninth day of our Lunar New Year. Yes. It's very yeah. easy to remember this year because just happened the first day happens on the first Feb, so there's no need for us to remember on which day which day of the Lunar New Year is it. Ah, that's good. That's good. <laughs> well, we have our first um comment coming. Hi, Alicia. Yeah. Gong si fa chai to you. Hi, Alicia. Yeah, gong si gong si. Yeah. So this evening we are going to take a visual, virtual, a virtual journey. Sorry to the pristine Altai region within Siberia in Russia. We are very happy to have a guest presenter all the way from Altai. And we, she will be joining us in a couple of minutes later. So where exactly is Altai located in this vast province of Siberia? We are going to find out soon. All right, so if you are finding that um, the auto captions, the subtitles, are getting annoying and getting in your way of going to watch the presentation later, you may wish to switch it off by following um, the instruction on the screen here. So before we are going to learn more about Altai, here is a video preview of the destination. I'm going to bring up the video now. So let's watch it together. Wow. So Mabel, what comes to your mind first about Siberia? Well, definitely not what I'm seeing in the video right now, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> because first thing that comes to my mind um, about Siberia is that it's full of snow, it's cold, 365 days. Uh, it's very, I think because it's like winter all year round. So my impression is yeah, it's white, then the days are dark, um, the daytime is short. Definitely not this beautiful scenery that I'm seeing right before my eyes. What is your impression of Altai? Before this whole presentation and before you know we connect with the uh, our partner in Siberia, I have no impression of Altai at all. I didn't even know this region exists, and if it mm -hmm. exists, where is it? So when uh, when you know when you came up with the packages, right? Then I saw the yes. pictures. I'm like, wow, unbelievable! You know, it's like it, it doesn't feel like um. I mean, yes, it is uh, uh, on Earth, right? But it just feels so mm -hmm. surreal, so so pristine. Like my first impression is, does anybody even live there? You know, it just feels like <laughs> by, by nature, by the animals, the wildlife. You know, it's so untouched that maybe we we should not be adventuring there. You know, <laughs> because it just looks so unreal, uh, Yeah, but it's breathtaking. So the views, the pictures I see. Yeah, so after you have watched this video, including a lot of our audience here, are you surprised what Altai has to offer? I think it takes my breath away. <laughs> more than surprised by what it has to offer. And then the shock value is there because that is mm. totally not what I imagine it would be. So when mm -hmm. the pictures, the video, all that come, so it's like, wow, there's really such a place that exists on Earth that is really quite unbelievable. And I'm really, really very excited to find out more later from our guest speaker, you know, just to understand mm -hmm. further and to see whether, you know, sometimes we know pictures, videos, they could be doctored and all that. So to see and to hear for like firsthand to see the pictures, I think that is what really I want to do. You know, it really makes me feel like going to see all these places for myself to justify Definitely. whatever I'm seeing on the screen. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, definitely. So you are, now you are going to hear it from the people who actually work and live there. So please join me to yes, welcome our right. presenter all the way from the Altai region from Russia. Let's welcome Miss Elena Svilatova. Uh, hi, hi Elena. Elena. <laughs> Glad to see you. Hello. Yeah, we are happy to see you too. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, we are mm, glad to uh, see you in this broadcast studio and uh, we are glad to greet you from our sunny and beautiful Siberia. Thank you very much <laughs> for taking the time for joining us and um, today we are going to present and introduce our motherland and homeland, the Altai Mountains, which is situated in the south parts of Siberia. First of all, I would like to appreciate our colleagues, Singapore colleagues, Cheryl and Mabel, uh, who arranged this webinar and led us to introduce uh, the Altai Mountains to the Singapore uh, colleagues. Uh, yes. Uh, I would like to share with our presentation slides uh, about the yes. Altai. Yeah, before you share the presentation, Elena, here mm -hmm. we have one of our viewers, Priscilla, says hello to you. Oh, hello, thank you. <laughs> hello, Priscilla. Yeah, and then also Elena, once she come on board, she already have dispelled the myth that Siberia is just cold and nothing. She told us that it's bright and sunny today. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's right. Yes, Siberia and Altai is really a sunny place. Uh, it is not a secret that um, many people in the world uh, think that uh, Siberia and Altai, it is the pole of cold. We have a lot of snow, harsh and severe climate. But uh, there are more than 300 of sunny days in Siberia. And uh, we can enjoy sun um, every day of our year around. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes it is wow. cold in winter times, but sometimes in summer time we have about 30 degrees uh, above the uh, above zero, yes, and it mm. is very hot. Mm. For example, in Altai we have some places where we, you can see mirages, and uh, it is uh, unbelievable, but it is <laughs> the fact. It is so. Yeah. So Elena and her professional team is our partner based in Russia. Her company creates many exciting expeditions to different parts of Russia. So before I hand the baton to Elena to tell us more about the most untouched and remote region, the Altai, Mabel is going to take a back seat to enjoy Elena's presentation as well as to monitor any questions coming in, which we are going to uh, answer them at the end of Elena's presentation. So if you have anything you would like to tell us, your thoughts while watching Elena's presentation or any questions you would like to ask, please feel free to put them in the comment box and then we will answer them and look into them one by one after Elena uh, presents. So now I'm going to put Mabel into the back room and Elena, you can bring up your presentation slide when you are ready. Yes, we are ready. Yes. Yep, you can share them and I will bring it up to the screen for our audience. Okay, let's start from this slide. Uh, this slide shows uh, the very beautiful place. This is one of the most beautiful landscapes of Altai, uh, the North uh, Chua Ridge and um, uh, Krai Steppe. It is situated near the border to Mongolia, and these peaks uh, are about 4,000 meters uh, height. And uh, the most uh, part of the year, they covered by snow and had a lot of glaciers. This place is uh, very interesting for high mountaineering, uh, hiking and trekking, and any other expeditions and activities. Um, in Altai, uh, also, uh, every tourist can see many places like this. And uh, this is why, because uh, people are excited from visiting this region. Uh, Altai very, is very compact, and but very diverse region. Um, the name of Altai is translated from Turkic um, languages as Golden Mountains. Uh, indeed, the region is so rich in natural and cultural attractions that it is uh, like a gem on the map of Russia.
This is the map of Russia, and uh, the red uh, territory is Altai, the Altai Republic. Indeed, the Altai is a geographical region that, that reaches uh, for 2,000 kilometers long from Siberia to the Gobi Desert, to Mongolia. And Altai Mountains are situated in the four countries. Uh, this, they are Kazakhstan, uh, Russia, China, and Mongolia. And uh, our Russian part of Altai, it is bordering with all of these countries. Um, uh, we have uh, one very interesting region in Altai, the Okok Plata, and in this place all the borders uh, uh, crosses. And uh, from one point you can see China, Mongolia, Kazakhstan and Russia, <laughs> and it is very unique, uh, it gives you very unique feelings. Um, it is not a secret that many people of the, in the world associate Siberia and Altai with the pole of cold and some place where uh, you can find a lot of snow and harsh and severe climate. But due to the fact uh, that Altai is located in the south of Siberia, it is the warmest and the sunniest part of it. For example, uh, here we found some unique facts about Altai region. For example, uh, three 160 days uh, in Altai are very sunny. And uh, uh, Altai has about 1,500 kilometers of uh, good uh, roads. And you can travel by these roads by car and enjoy adventures and beautiful views. Uh, in Altai, you can experience four, all the four seasons uh, which exist in the world, spring, uh, summer, autumn, and winter. And all of these seasons are very extremely different. In winter, for example, it is very uh, cold, a lot of snow. Spring is very beautiful because in spring we have uh, blooming of flowers. Uh, summer is the most popular uh, season for traveling. Uh, most of travelers come to Altai in summertime. And autumn is the most picturesque time because uh, you can see many, many colors, uh, great uh, yellow leaves, turquoise rivers, and uh, first snow you can experience, all, experience also in autumn. And because of it, autumn is the most popular season for photographers and the, to photo trips, for photo trips. Uh, Altai is the second uh, highest mountainous region in Russia after the Great Caucasus. And uh, the most, uh, the highest peak of Altai, the Beluha mountain, is the highest peak of Siberia also. Uh, Altai also have uh, many clean mountain rivers. Uh, there are maybe about 12,000 rivers in Altai and also about uh, 7,000 uh, mountain lakes. And uh, the water in rivers and uh, many lakes is uh, very clean and pure. And some people, sometimes people can drink water from rivers and lakes. It is very unusual for people who live in big city and megapolises and big countries. Uh, the territory of Altai is... Um, if we will compare the territory of Altai with Russia, it is very small. But if uh, we can compare it with um, other countries, it is uh, like a territory of South Korea or Iceland. It is about 100 square kilometers. But uh, there are uh, these vast uh, and pristine territories are not uninhabited because only 220,000 people lives here and um, the population des density is less than a half of uh, human being for one square kilometer. So you can travel in Altai and sometime mm, we visit some places where human being, being never, uh, be, uh, never visited. It is very also very unique feeling. Uh, there is, uh, in Altai, we have the only one city. It is the capital of the region, uh, the Gordon Altai city. And the population of this city is only 68,000 people. Very small city. But Altai is a multicultural region. And um, 
here we can find representatives of all the main world religions uh, who lives here. Uh, we have Christians, Muslims, uh, Buddhists, and also local people, the Altaic people, they practice shamanism. Um, so in Altai we can um, offer for our tourists uh, many, many different types of journeys and trips. It can be sightseeing tours, uh, treatment and spa holidays, active and adventure tourism. Here you can experience jeeping, uh, mountaineering, whitewater rafting, trekking, hiking and expeditions also. Also, this region is very interesting for ethnographical and cultural tourism. Um, it is it's uh, for to visit Russia. Citizens of Singapore will need to, to have a visa. Uh, now, uh, tourist visa is valid from one to thirty days, and it is issued at the consulate of Russia in Singapore. This year, Russia introduces the practice of issuing electronic visas as an experiment. The validity of such visa. Uh, uh, will be up to eight days, but uh, Singapore is not yet in the list of the countries whose citizens can use this service. But uh, we hope that in the nearest future, uh, electronic visa will be available for Singapore too, and it will um, it 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 will make our um, tourist uh, programs more easy. Uh, it seems that Altai is located incredibly far from Singapore, but it is not uh, the case at all. Uh, it takes you only about six hours uh, by flight uh, to reach the Altai from Singapore. The nearest international airport is Novosibirsk, uh, Tolmachova Airport. Uh, this airport is a residen residential of a Russian aircraft company, S7. And S7 has regular flights to Bangkok and Beijing. And from Bangkok, uh, only one hour by flight aircraft to reach Singapore. Also, um, if you will plan um, the trip to Altai, I recommend you to, do, to devote time to Novosibirsk because this is the third uh, largest city in Russia after Moscow and St. Petersburg. And Novosibirsk is the capital of Siberia. Uh, here you can find many interesting museums, cultural monuments and places uh, must uh, be visited. For example, uh, here in Novosibirsk is the largest uh, theater of Russia, the Novosibirsk Opera and Ballet Theater is situated. Also, a uh, very interesting place in Novosibirsk is Akadem Gorodok. This is the residence of a uh, Siberian uh, Science Academy of Russia, Siberian branch of, uh, Academy, of Academy of Science of Russia. And in Akadem Gorodok, uh, you can... Uh, Find the places uh, where the uh, many, many um, uh, world uh, discoveries were made. For example, for example, uh, the first um, collider were uh, built in Novosibirsk, and now in Novosibirsk, I Novosibirsk is the place where. Uh, Russian vaccine against COVID is being developed and manufactured. Uh, if we will uh, d discover some natural places in Novosibirsk, the most beautiful is the Op Sea. This is artificial sea, which were made by, uh, created by a platinum of hydroelectric power, power station. But uh, the Op Sea is very vast and beautiful, and many people like to spend the holidays here. From Novosibirsk to Gorno Altaisk to Altai, you can reach by uh, car. It takes you about six hours, uh, 600 kilometers. Also, you can take a plane. We have a small air, local aircraft, uh, which, um, and it get you uh, only, take you only one hour to reach Gornaltaisk by this aircraft. But it is very small, and the capacity of this aircraft is only 14 passengers. So we should book the tickets very, very <laughs> before. <laughs> uh, this is the main city of um, Altai, and the capital of Altai Republic. 
uh, this is the city from which we uh, start our trips in Altai. If you are planning to uh, visit Russia from Singapore through Moscow and visit our capital, we have also regular flights from Moscow to Gornaltaisk. Uh, uh, they are daily flights and it takes maybe four hours uh, by flight to reach the Altai from Moscow. About accommodation. In the recent years, we um, built many beautiful and comfortable hotels in Altai. We have uh, five-star hotels, four-star hotels. Also, we have uh, many glampings and uh, also some um, places where you can experience uh, local uh, locals and ethnic culture. Uh, these hotels are built from natural uh, materials using natural wood. As a rule, uh, they um, offer small cottages with a beautiful view of nature. The main feature of the region is the most uh, resort and unique corners of Altai are located in the high mountains, so there is no civilization and service. Therefore, if tourists want to see uh, and experience the most unique parts of Altai, they will have to sacrifice comfort and stay for several nights in hotels or tourist bases uh, where conditions differ from five-star hotel. But also, uh, this place is beautiful and people uh, enjoy their views and nature in such places. Altai is one of the most ecological regions of Altai and the world. Uh, there is no a single industrial enterprise on the territory of Altai. Locals live only uh, by farming and ecotourism. A quarter of the territory of Altai is reserves, national parks and natural monuments, uh, specially protected areas. 70% of the territory of Altai is covered by taiga and mountain forests, so the air in Altai is especially clean and fresh. Uh, we have five UNESCO World Heritage Sites in Altai. Uh, they are the Altai Bias Biosphere Reserve, Katun Biosphere Reserve, the Ukok Plata, Lake Teletska, and Mountain Beluha. All, all of these sites uh, were included into the list of UNESCO in 1998 under the name uh, Golden Mountains of Altai. On the border with Mongolia, we have... Uh, Another interesting uh, area and, uh, and region, it is uh, Sailugem National Park, a uh, available natural area where the largest population of snow leopards in Russia lives. Rangers of this park uh, monitor the snow leopards, study their habits, uh, habit, habitats, number, and um, with the help of camera traps. In the mountains, on the trails where the snow leopard walk, walks, special camera traps are inst installed and record any movement and take photos and videos of animals. For more than 10 years, a huge material of snow leopards has been collected. It, it was possible to determine the exact number as well as to observe the fate of individual leopards. Each snow leopard has its own unique pattern of spots on the skin, which allows park staff to identify them and to give nicknames and follow the fate. As tourists, we can participate in the program of this park uh, to go together with the rangers to check camera traps to sponsor the purchase of new photo traps. In our practice, there were several cases when tourists gave money to buy camera traps. We made a logo to these traps and together with tourists, we installed a camera trap on the tra uh, trail of snow leopards. And afterwards, inspectors of the park went to the deserved corners of Altai and take, took, took the photos from the traps and sent to our tourists. And they gave pro, uh, permission to use these photos and videos in their individual Instagram and any other um, cases. Uh, visiting the Selegemsky Park is possible only with the registration of a special border pass because this region is a bordering territory with Mongolia and China. Uh, it, is, uh, it takes uh, about 30 days to issue such permission. Uh, our company will help our tourists to uh, arrange all the ne needable papers. Another interesting place is Mount Beluha. 
this is the next slide. Mount um, Beluga is the sum symbol of Altai and the high, highest peak of Siberia. It is 4,500 meters above the sea level. Uh, Beluga is a huge mountain massif. Um, it has about 160 glaciers on its slopes, and uh, all the year it is covered by the snow. Beluha is also a, a border uh, region with Kazakhstan, and also to reach the Beluha, we need to arrange a special permission. Uh, Beluha has two peaks, uh, south, uh, eastern and western peaks. And um, it is equidistant from all four oceans of the planet. Uh, on its top, we uh, originate, originate the largest rivers of Siberia. Mm, for example, the Op River, which included in the 10 the largest river of the planet. Uh, Beluha is a major tourist center of Altai. There are climbing roads, multi-day trekking tours in the mountains, helicopter excursions. Since Beluha is a protected area, accommodation here is possible only in a tent or in a tourist campsite. Beluha is symbolically depicted on the coat of arms of Altai. Uh, and the name Beluha comes from the word white. And it is, it is associated with a huge amount of snow on its slope. Also, the mountain is called white because very often it is wrapped in clouds. The Beluha has other names, for example, Kadin Baji, the Altaic name, which means the top of the Katun River. Muzutu, uh, this is the Kazakh name, it means ice mountain. Uch Sumer, Indo Aryan name, uh, it means a mountain with three peaks. A lot of legends are associated with Beluha. It is believed that on the top, of Beluha lives the supreme spirit master of Altai, and also there is the entrance to Shambhala. By the fact that the mountain has many uh, names of different languages, you can immediately see what a diverse uh, number of ethnic groups and people live near Beluha. They are old believers, Slavic uh, people, uh, the Altai people, the Kazakhs, and the followers of Buddhism. Uh, regular pilgrimage tours and esoteric treks are made to Beluha by those who are interested in yoga and spiritual, spiritual practices. Many of our tourists like to fly by Beluha to helicopter. During the tour, we fly around the massif of Beluha, very close to the peaks and glaciers, glaciers which add special emotions during the flight. We also make a landing on a glacier on high altitude lakes in the places where a human being has never set foot. The best time to visit Beluha is May, from May to September for trekking. And for helicopter excursions, any season is available. Another pearl of the Altai is Lake Teletskaya. This is the deepest lake of Altai and the one of the five, five deepest lakes of Russia. Uh, its maximum depth is 325 meters, and average deep depth is about 170 meters. Uh, the lake contains a huge uh, volume of fresh water. For example, um, uh, for a city with the population of 500,000 people, the water uh, of Teletsky Lake can... Uh, the people, people from such city can drink the water from the lake for, for 600 years. Uh, the volume of fresh water is very huge. Teletska Lake is, has a tectonic structure. It is very deep and narrow because located in a mountain crevice. The lake is named after the Teles tribe who lives on its shores. Another name of the lake is Altin Kyol, uh, which is translated as Golden Lake. Uh, not far from Lake Teletska, there are, there are deposits of native gold. At the beginning of the 20th century, the largest nugget weighing uh, 24 kilograms was mined. The lake is surrounded by mountain taiga, Siberian pine tree, large tree and spruce. The air he, uh, here is clean and humid. On Teletska Lake is the warmest place 
of Western Siberia, uh, the Bele uh, village is situated. Uh, here, uh, local people, uh, they grow apple trees, apricots, walnuts, plums, and other uh, southern um, vegetables and fruits. Um, the, it is because uh, lake has a warm and special microclimate. It is accused because the lake accumulates solar heat during the summer and in winter it is slowly cooled down and gives it uh, to neighboring shores. The unique fact that Teletska Lake freezes completely once every 10 or 15 years. Uh, on the lake, uh, we uh, in the summertime, the main activities on the lake are boat trips, uh, visiting waterfalls, fishing trip, and also visit the locals. The fact is that uh, there are no roads around the lake because its shores are steep rocks. Therefore, the inhabitants of small settlements and villages on the shores of lake during the year are cut off from the outside world and lead a rather unusual and closed lifestyle. When we come to visit them in summer, they treat us with their delicious dishes, vegetables from garden, mushrooms and berries from taiga, fresh fish from the lake, uh, fresh milk and bread, which is baked in the oven. Lunch here is very tasty and always impressed our tourists. In winter, the Leska Lake, uh, we ride snowmobiles here, uh, mountain skiing and dog sledding. On Telexka Lake, accommodation can be arranged at the Altai Village Hotel. It is the most luxury and expensive hotel of Altai. There is also a five-star hotel, several simple tourist campsites and bases. In the southern part of the lake, there is a tent glamping. Another uh, region of Altai we want to introduce is the Ukok Plateau. Uh, this is the most remote territory of Altai. It is located on the border of Russia, Kazakhstan, China, and Mongolia. Therefore, a visit to Okok requires registration of a border pass. The area is surrounded in an aura of mystery because there are more than 400 archaeological monuments on Okok. Among the most famous and world famous are the mounds in the valley of the Akalaha River, where glaciated mummies are uh, more than two and a half thousand years old were found. Uh, the mummy is known as the Altai Princess or Ice Maiden. In the mounds, along with mummies, carpets, clothes, seeds of overseas plants have been preserved. The findings confirmed that in ancient times the inhabitants of Altai had close contacts uh, with the civilization of the ancient India, China, and Western Asia. For example, ice maiden clothes were made from Indian silk, and in the ritual incense burning, there were uh, coriander seeds from Central Asia. In other mounds of the same time, the world's oldest. Persian pile carpet was found. Artifacts of this quality and age have not been preserved anywhere else in the world. The Ukok is framed by the mountain massive Altai Tavan Bog, which translated as the five sacred peaks. These mountains in the southern part descend towards Mongolia and China. There are no accommodation facilities on the Ukok plateau and the road by uh, we can reach the Okok is suitable only for special uh, prepared jeeps. And travel to Okok is possible only in the format of expedition or by helicopter. Uh, another place um, which is uh, uh, we, which we can um, announce as a highlight of Altai is the Katun River. This is the largest river of Altai. Uh, the Katun is originates, originates on the slopes of Mount Biluha. The name of the river is translated as a mistress or wife of the uh, master of Altai. The Katun Basin includes all the rivers which uh, that flows in the Altai. Katun is 
incredibly picturesque. Since the river has a rather large lens, its landscapes are very different. This is a mountain river on which you can make uh, white water rafting. In the lower parts of Katun near Gornaltaisk is the most popular tourist destination. There is a huge number of hot hotels of different levels of comfort and prices. Katun has one remarkable feature. In late August, early September, it waters, its waters become amazingly turquoise in color. This color persists until the beginning of spring, when melting begins in the mountains. Katun's color is due to the optical effect. In summer, incentive melting of glaciers begins, which pollute uh, the water of the Katun. In Altai, there are a huge number of lakes, um, mountain lakes, uh, about 700 of 700,000 of lakes many of lakes are um, situated uh, very very high in mountains and reachable only by helicopter but uh, when you um, get to them you need to make a flight to to, to a flight by helicopter among the most picturesque and um, beautiful lakes are the lower Shavlinska lake. You can see this lake on the picture and the Darashkol lake. Um, when you um, reach this lake, they are typical mountain with cold water and intense current. Getting to such lakes, it seems that we are not in Siberia, but somewhere in Swiss Alps. Uh, another place is Chuska steppe. This place is a vast, pristine um, land uh, on the border with Mongolia. Uh, this is high mountain, semi-desert land. It is uh, about 2,000 meters above the sea level. But uh, the landscapes of Chuiske Steppe uh, are very similar to Mongolia or type landscapes. Uh, here in Chuiske Steppe, it is... Uh, very difficult to imagine, but this semi-desert semi place, uh, thousands of years ago, it was the bottom of vast ocean. And um, nowadays, our scientists find a lot of um, fossils here in Chuska Steppe. For example, uh, uh, one of the most popular places here is Altaiski Mars. You can see also this place in the um, right corner of the slide. Um, this is the oldest rocks of Altai, which arose even before the formation of the Altai mountains. Previously, uh, Altaiski Mars was uh, a vast subtropical sea, which left behind unique uh, red, orange, yellow, and white clay clays. Getting to this place, it is really seems uh, that we found ourselves on Mars. So unusual look at the landscape of this place. Also here you can find many uh, imprints of mollusks and shell algae. For example, in the Chuske steppe, uh, the vertebra of a giant whale was found. Another uh, region of Altai is Chuske tract. Um, this is the most beautiful highway of Altai. According to National Geographic Russia magazine, this is one of the 10 most beautiful mountain roads in the world. The length of Chuski Tract is about 900 kilometers. It begins in Novosibirsk, passes through the entire Altai and ends at the border with Mongolia. Chuski Tract crosses all the natural zones in which Altai is located. Traveling along the Chuski Tract is one of the main routes of Altai. The most beautiful places are located between Gornaltaisk and the border with Mongolia. Uh, here you can find uh, mountain passes, um, rock drawings, uh, beautiful rivers along the Chuski tract. Um, the most popular are Kalbaktash uh, rock drones, uh, the Geyser Lake, and the peaks of the North Chuski Range. The road along the Chuiski tract is usually built with a flight on the plane of the local aircraft uh, to the extreme point of the tract. 
to the border with Mongolia. And then by car, we begin our journey uh, that lasting two, from two for four days with intermediate stops and overnight stays. Altai is beautiful in any time. And um, the most tourists travel here in warm season, from May to September. In summer, it is possible to organize all uh, very different activities, such as jeep tours and expeditions, helicopter flights, horseback riding, fishing, rafting, whitewater rafting, uh, mountaineering, and uh, quad bike trips. Um, also, we invite uh, our guests to visit Altai in winter time because in winter you can see uh, here you can see the summer season. Uh, Jeep and sometimes our Jeep tours are very extremely uh, helicopter roads to high mountains. Uh, the next slide represents um, horse riding. Horse riding also is very uh, exciting. Johnny, fishing. Uh, the best time for fishing is September. White water rafting. Th this is the place. This is the Katun River. And on the slide, you can see the deepest place on the river. It is uh, 70 meters depth. Uh, very, very rapid. <laughs> but um, in Katun River, we can find um, white water raft rafting of various um, difficulty. Uh, also quad bikes are very popular quad bikes are available both uh, in summer and in winter time uh, also um, uh, and these lights represent uh, Altai in winter time uh, as you see a lot of uh, frozen waterfalls uh, frozen lakes uh, and uh, Turkish ices are available in winter time uh, also, winter time is um, very beautiful because uh, Altai is the only one place in uh, Siberia where the wild swans uh, come to spend winter. In Altai, we have a special swan lake. It is situated in the foothills of Altai, and this lake uh, never frozen in winter time because of um, many springs on its bottom. On its bottom and swans uh, they winter here uh, more than uh, 100 years ago and um, from November to the end of February uh, our guests can see about 1,000 of swans in the small lake. It is very beautiful. Um, you can feed them. You can take photographs, amazing photographs of the swans. Uh, and many, many people like to visit Altai, especially to experience this um, swan lake. So, uh, Altai is, uh, in winter in Altai, you can uh, do snowmobiling. Uh, also, we have uh, several skiing resorts, um, uh, Manjerok, uh, Bela Kuriha, and Telezka Lake. Uh, our tourists uh, like uh, dog sledding, also very exciting activity. And wind is uh, very good for ethnographical tourism, because we can arrange a lot of Russian and Altaic activities, uh, such as uh, horse sledding, uh, round uh, uh, um, photographing in uh, national costumes, uh, national cuisine, and many others. Um, also, winter is uh, very good for Russian banya. Uh, uh, Many, many people uh, like to experience hot banya and afterwards um, cold uh, river, rivers or lakes <laughs> afterward, after it. And extremely hot and afterwards extremely cold uh, temperatures are very good for health. Um, another season... Yes, this, uh, the, this, the, 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 here you can see the photographs from the Swan Lakes. And in uh, very cold uh, temperatures, uh, all the swans, they come to this lake. Um, 
Dog sledding. Uh, we arrange many uh, expeditions and tours by, in dog sleds. And the most popular place for sledding is Siminsky Pass, uh, the highest point of Chuiski Tract. Uh, this place is uh, interesting because many, many uh, Russian cinema where uh, needs snows was taken here in the Siminsky Pass. And the snow um, becomes uh, from um, October until the end of March here. And also we have a lot of skiing resorts. Uh, these photographs uh, was, ta was taken in Manjirok Resort. Um, now I want to uh, say a few words about springtime. In the beginning of May, we have very, very beautiful and picturesque season and uh, natural phenomenon. Uh, we call it uh, the blooming of uh, rhododendron. Uh, those uh, lilac and uh, lilac shrubs uh, is rhododendron shrubs. Uh, it is evergreen shrub. And uh, in the beginning of May, it uh, begins to bloom. And many people come especially for this time to experience this uh, beautiful um, natural phenomenon and also we want to invite you to visit Altai in autumn time because here uh, we can see uh, many many colorful um, landscapes and uh, places and uh, autumn is the most uh, popular season for photographers so in uh, Altai Mm, yeah, here you can see the Geyser Lake, uh, one of the popular destinations of the Chuski Tract, Geyser Lake. This lake is uh, also never frozen. In winter it is also not uh, covered by ice and uh, people like to visit uh, this small lake uh, to take pictures, photos, photos of it. Altai also, um, now our trip to Altai is complete without getting acquainted with the culture of local residents. Since Altai is a multinational and multicultural territory, uh, we can visit uh, the Russian old believers as a part of our tour to get acquainted with the life of the ancient Slavs. Uh, also, we visit nomads of Altai and listen the concert of Altai throughout singing. This is the unique technique of performing uh, a folk songs with the help of deep and guttural sounds. Some tourists want to visit shaman and take part uh, in shamanic rituals. It is also interesting to visit sheep herd camps in the mountains and family of Kazakh Muslims. Uh, in the tours, we always include, include testing of national cuisine. Among the Altai people, uh, the, these are milk and meat dishes made from lamb and horse meat. Uh, Russians have dishes from vegetables, forest berries and mushrooms, peas and uh, a very famous Russian soup, borscht. Also, we make a green lunch. Uh, we offer our guests Russian dishes with addition of wild plants, fern, bud, uh, burdock, chaga, aspen, and many other others. Altai is famous for its honey, pine nuts, cheese, and meat. Since cattle graze in the mountains in natural conditions and feed only on wild grass without the addition of chemicals, meat has a specific and unique taste. In general, all of our tours are based on the following principles. First of them is a variety of natural pictures and landscapes. As, as part of the tour, we try to show all the natural regions of Altai the meadows of the Russian steppes, the Siberian taiga, alpine mountains, and Turkish lakes, mountain rivers, high-altitude semi-deserts. Uh, we um, um, try to make acquaintance and immersion in the local flavor and culture. We always visit the locals, their homes, not just to travel around the region as tourists, but to learn more about the life of the people living here. Often we are treated to a homemade dinner. 
Uh, local cuisine, dishes made from organic and fresh products, comfortable accommodation and interesting workshops. Um, at the end of our presentation, uh, we would like to, we, we will be glad to see you in Altai and organize for your guests a unique and amazing trip in which they will receive a lot of new and um, exciting express impressions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Elena, for the wonderful presentation. It's, it's just amazing how beautiful Altai is. It's so colorful. Yes, it is uh, colorful and um, very diverse. Uh, in Altai, we can experience, uh, I suppose, every uh, natural landscape um, which exists in uh, Russia. So from indeed, Arctic, indeed, yes, from snows and um, snow peaks and glaciers uh, to uh, meadows and steppes. It is very beautiful. And Altai, uh, traveling in Altai because of it uh, will never be boring. Every day will be different from another. So definitely. Uh, yes, yeah, so when people travel in Altai, for example, one week, um, in, at the end of the trip, they say us that uh, we don't remember <laughs> what um, <laughs> what happened with us before in the first day because uh, only seven days uh, and they last least like uh, the whole life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, indeed. And, and, we, and we were just talking earlier on that uh, during this period of time, the Altai region is actually doing exceptionally well despite the pandemic because of its remoteness, its um, natural landscape, a lot of the Russians are making use of this opportunity to visit the region. Yes. So you can, uh, now on the screen here, there are all together five trips that we have prepared for the Altai region. So these trips will take place when the borders uh, for leisure travel reopens with Russia. So the first two itineraries are more skewed to work for the regular trekkers. That is the trekking around the foothills of Mount Beluka, as well as hiking in Chuya, uh, Chuya Yaps. And if you would like to do more um, activities such as like horseback riding, then maybe the ATV rides, and also a little bit walking around the uh, mountain ranges, then the Planet Altai, as well as the best of Altai Active Funds itinerary will suit uh, most of the travelers who are looking uh, to visit this part of the world. Then last but not least, we also have a special program tailor-made for the winter period of time. That is Winter Active Fund in Siberia. So all this itinerary will cover about in a week or slightly more than a week's time. So it is very um, suitable for uh, many Singaporeans to make a week to about 10 days vacation in the Altai region. So as Elena have told us, some of the best period to go is during the springtime as well as autumn, if you want to see a lot of colors and flowers. And then if you really want to experience a fairy tale winter wonderland, then the winter months will be the best times to go. Right. So now we are going into our questions and answer session. I can see that we have um, quite a lot of comments and questions coming up and I'm going to go through them. So Priscilla, she has commented that what Elena has presented is really beautiful. And then here we have some questions from Mabel. I can see that while Elena is presenting, Mabel is already preparing her next vacations. So people ask, are we going to experience any mm -hmm. altitude sickness when we are in Altai? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I suppose no, because um, 
altitude sickness begins from the uh, height of more than 3,000 kilometers. It is high in the mountains. Uh, but uh, mostly our tours uh, and trips, uh, they are on the, at the altitude uh, maybe 400 or uh, up to 2,000 meters above the sea level. At, the, at this altitude, you will not experience altitude sickness. Uh, but if we will have a short trip to the high mountains, but for example, mm -hmm. by helicopter, this period is very short, so you will not experience also this sickness. All right. Okay. Then she has another question. Do, you, do we have to carry our own backpacks mm -hmm. when we are going on the hike around Mount Baluka foothills? Um, we have two opportunities. Um, when our guest uh, trekked around the bil hiked around the Biluha, uh, we, we use horses uh, for carrying backpacks. But um, some of our guests, uh, they prefer to carry a small backpack with, uh, for example, um, jacket or some um, needable things for the day. But the whole um, luggage, such as tents, uh, backpacks, and other, uh, we carry by horses. All right. Here's another question. What happens if we need to use the washroom while visiting places like the Chuskaya site? Uh, yes, uh, it is okay. <laughs> In choose <laughs> case, uh, we have um, not so much, but we have hotels with uh, such facilities <laughs> and we accommodate our tourists in this place. For example, uh, Selugemski National Park, um, who uh, monitors snow leopards. In uh, choose case, step, they have wonderful hotel. It is small, only seven rooms, uh, but it is very comfortable. And um, when we arrange our trips, we accommodate uh, our tourists here. Also, the rangers of the park in the evenings, they show us uh, videos and photographs of snow leopards and tell a lot of interesting stories about them. I see. Okay. So I'm going to play another video to give us an overview of the, uh, the Altai region again. And then while we are watching the video, we are going to continue with the questions and uh, answer sessions. Right. So now I'm going to bring up our last video. So we're going to continue with our questions and answer. I want to Let comment the video. Oh, uh, Cheryl, let me <laughs> give me one second. Sure. This sure. video, Go ahead. Uh, this video was made uh, last summer. Uh, our client uh, asked us to arrange tent camp high in the mountains in Pristine region, and uh, we it was about a, a camp for fifty people. <laughs> we bring them by helicopter the, to this place and had uh, three wonderful nights high in the mountains. We wow. had a lot of trekking, and this exper experience. Um, was unique for us and now we uh, are going to arrange a uh, regular camp in this place because it is very beautiful and um, mm, uh, very good for arranging camp tent camp yes i can i can see how beautiful it is especially that it's so remote that you have to take the helicopter up and then before you can set up the tent so i'm sure yes. it's like a three days of spending in remoteness without yes. any communication device and it is <laughs> really a best place for digital detox i must say yes the most um amazing impression in this place for me was a uh, night starry sky because uh so many stars uh, i have not seen before anywhere <laughs> Because no <laughs> uh, city lights, any city lights, and no civilization, and the stars is too close, very, very close to us. Yes, I, I guess for many many of us, especially like Singaporeans, we live in the city. This is something that we would probably have never ever experienced 
in yes. Singapore. So it's definitely a very valuable uh, experience for any one of us that's going to last in our memory for a long, long time. Let's look at what are some of the questions that we have. Right. What is the grading of the white water rafting course? Do we need to be a strong swimmer to participate in this activity? Um, for our regular trips, we offer uh, not a very difficult, white, very difficult white water rafting. Um, for example, um, my son, who is uh, eight years old, he participated in white water rafting last summer. Uh, only uh, for travelers, we uh, offer only two. Uh, difficulty categories uh, from five and uh, it lasts uh, from one to three hours and you don't need to be a strong swimmer because um, we um, have a good instructor who um, uh, who is in one um, boat with our tourists and also we uh, give special jackets, range uh, safe jackets for tourists. And if you will um, go out from the boat, you will not, um, it, it is not uh, dangerous. But we have no cases when our tourists <laughs> go out from the boat, only if they want to jump out and swim in some uh, summer hot days. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The next one, how cold can it get in Altai during the winter season? Um, it uh, can be very cold, up to 30 degrees, uh, minus, uh, minus 30 degrees by Celsius. Um, the coldest month is January. Um, it is the coldest month of winter. Uh, in February, we have a lot of sun and sunny days so february is the most comfortable um, winter month but also altai is very diverse by climate for example from uh, when you will move through altai from for example the border from mongolia to lake tiletska the temperature can uh, rise from minus 30 uh, up to minus 5 degrees it is very, very extremely diverse. Uh, it depends on the place where you will be traveling in Altai in winter time. But um, due to a rigid climate, and uh, Altai is not very humid region, and a lot of sunny days, uh, the temperature, the winter temperatures are very convenient, convenient and comfortable. Mm. All right. Here we have another question for Irene. She asked, will we be able to do any cycling trips in the Altai region? Yes, yes. Cycling is very popular. Uh, you, we have many roads for cycling. For example, Chuiski Tract is a very popular road for cycling. Also, we have uh, one road from um, Tungur village to Inigen village. Uh, this is off-road uh, It is for off-road cycling. Also very beautiful. Uh, it is about 40 kilometers, but very picturesque and interesting road. Yes, I guess uh, Trukhaus Track is one of the best place for cycling, 900 kilometers long, yes. so you can cycle yes. to our heart's content. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. During travel in the Trusky Track, we see a lot of cycling travelers. <laughs> Wonderful. So now I'm going to bring Mabel back into our stream. Welcome back, Mabel. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Thank you. How do you Thank find you so our time? Elena. You have so much questions. Yeah, <laughs> I couldn't help it. That whenever Elena shows something new, a, a beautiful destination, I will have all the questions but i think i'm just like um asking on behalf of everybody that maybe everybody else is too shy uh, but that's <laughs> the usual questions uh if i'm i mean as a first timer to altai i'll be asking but the the pictures mm. that yelena shared wow like drooling throughout the whole <laughs> presentation 
Yeah, it's so amazing. It, it really totally changed my perception of Siberia, you know, from a cold, white uh, country to somewhere that is so warm and beautiful, filled with uh, many different sceneries during the four seasons. Yeah, I think it definitely. really makes me definitely want to go. Yes, in this lifetime. <laughs> now we are only just waiting for the borders to reopen with Russia and then uh and hopefully S7 is going to resume their flight um to at least Bangkok because that will be the nearest gateway for us to get to the Altai region is via Bangkok. So once border reopens, S7 airlines resume their flight, I'm sure every one of us is good to pack our bag and ready to go. Yes. And we will be glad to invite you and meet here in Altai region. And I want to um, tell you one little secret. All the photographs in this presentation were made by my husband, who is a professional photographer. Wow. And I am very wow. appreciate him because he shows me so many uh, beautiful sunsets and downs and many beautiful uh, regions of Altai and uh, very unique phenom natural phenomena. <laughs> indeed, indeed. I can see I can see the areas of colors during the springtime as well as during the autumn times. It's just yeah. vibrant. It's really vibrant and extremely, extremely beautiful. Yes, yeah. autumn is the most beautiful season in Altai, I suppose it's autumn. <laughs> because it is <laughs> uh, very very beautiful uh, and this uh, colorful um, time is september only september and the beginning of october mm -hmm. because uh, in the second part of october it begins to snow and all the leaves uh, falls down mm. oh, so anybody okay. who love to take photographs mm -hmm. uh, could also consider to go to the altai region during the autumn months and I'm, I'm sure you're going to come back with lots and lots of yes. beautiful pictures just like how Elena's husband has taken them yes yeah so before we let Elena's go we are going to share what we are what is our next destination for the next week nights with wonder girls which is going to take place on 23rd of February at 8 30 in the evening Anyone here would like to make a guess where will we where, where will we be going then? Just by looking at this picture. <laughs> Before I give you the answer. <laughs> it's a place that is very close to Alta region and Elena has mentioned it several times in her presentation. <laughs> yes. We will be going to the land um, of Genghis Khan on 23rd of February. So we're going yes. to have another of our guest presenter from Mongolia to come and share with us about hiking, cycling, holidays in Mongolia, as well as to talk a little bit about the Gobi Desert. So if this is a bucket list destination, please do tune in on 23rd of February. So thank you very much to Elena for spending her time with us this evening. Thank you so thank much you. for sharing about our Thai region. Thank you we so much. learned so much and we hope we have evoked uh, some of your uh, travel aspiration one more time again through Elena. And then we look forward to having you with us on our next trip to the Altai region in Russia. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.